Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas Armstrong. This is part eight of my 12 part video series on the myth of the ADHD child. This video is entitled ADHD as an evolutionary advantage. Let me preface this presentation by saying that I do believe ADHD symptoms do exist, but I believe that after 50 years of studying this issue, the hypothesis that there is a specific medical disorder called ADHD that's causing these symptoms is wrong, and that there are many other points of view that can account for these symptoms. In part one of this video series, I explain why I call ADHD a myth. In this video, I look at how what is viewed as ADHD may instead be an evolutionary advantage. In 1859, the British naturalist Charles Darwin wrote The Origin of Species, one of the most influential books written in the modern era. In it, he proposed the theory of natural selection as the underlying principle of evolution. According to Darwin, organisms that have traits adaptive to their immediate environment tend to prosper, and these traits are then passed along to subsequent generations. On the other hand, organisms that have traits that don't adapt well to their environment die off because of their failure to adapt, and their traits are lost to subsequent generations. Thus, some traits are preserved over time and other traits are lost, all because of the way they either did or did not adapt to an organism's immediate environment. This helps explain most of the traits that we see in organisms, from bacteria to human beings. One of the clues that gave Darwin inspiration for his theory was his observation of finches on the Galapagos Islands 600 miles off the coast of Ecuador in South America. He noticed the differences in their beaks from those that he saw on the mainland of South America and came to the realization that the differences between their beaks had something to do with their ability to adapt to the environment, in this case, to find and consume food. Those finches with thicker beaks, for example, had evolved traits that were able to crack open seeds while those with spear-like beaks were better able to penetrate, kill, and consume insects. Each bird type had developed its own way to best adapt to a seed-rich or an insect-rich environment. Now let's shift our focus to 1993. In that year, American radio personality author former psychotherapist, businessman, and progressive political commentator, Tom Hartman, who identifies as someone with ADHD, wrote a book called Attention Deficit Disorder, A Different Perception. In the book, Hartman suggested that people with ADHD were the hunters of our culture, descended from the hunters of the prehistoric era. He asserted that so-called normal or neurotypical people are the farmers of society, descended from people of the Neolithic age, when agriculture emerged as the primary pattern of cultural development. Hence his slogan, ADHD, hunters in a farmer's world. When I first came upon Hartman's idea, I found his theory very captivating, but thought of it more as a general metaphor than as, as an actual genetic fact. Little di did I suspect that there was more to this idea than mere metaphor. Here we can see how ADHD seems related to the hunter personality. Hunters in the wild in prehistoric times had to be constantly on the move in order to find food to bring back to their families. They also had to contend with predators, keeping away from them, whether they be animals or hostile tribes. The farmer, on the other hand, doesn't move around a lot. He stays with his crop. He puts the seed into the ground and waits. 
there needs to be a lot of ability to delay gratification while waiting for the plant to germinate, grow, and then produce a fruit. A lot of patience is required. Hartman suggests that what we regard as a symptom of ADHD, that is hyperactivity, is actually a trait that was preserved through natural selection from the era of the hunter during the Paleolithic age because it was an adaptive trait that allowed him to get food and avoid becoming food, thus prospering and passing this trait on to future generations. Similarly, the hunter has to pay attention to several things at the same time. A twig breaking that may mean a predator is near, the sound of drums in the distance signifying a tribe in the area, animal tracks on the ground suggesting the presence of a potential food source, and the hunter who would stop and stare for hours at an animal track might well be gobbled up, thus not passing his quote unquote patience genes on to future generations. The farmer, on the other hand, does focus on things for long periods of time, especially when they relate to his raising grain crops or tending to his herd of cows, sheep, oxen, or other animals. The ability to, de to deploy attention for short bursts of time that the hunter uses as an advantage out in the forest or jungle, we now refer to as the distractibility of the so-called ADHD person. What was an advantage in prehistoric times is now seen as a warning sign of ADHD. Finally, the hunter needs to respond quickly to any input he receives from the environment. He hears the sound of a mountain lion, and if he doesn't react quickly by running to safety or by advancing on the animal, then he's toast. That's the end of them. The hunter is, who is able to respond quickly has a clear advantage, and this trait is likely to then be preserved and handed down to future generations. The farmer, on the other hand, takes his time to record data, weather patterns, precipitation amounts, growth of plants, and other information to better help him in raising crops or tending to his herds. The ability of the hunter to respond quickly to input from the environment during prehistoric times, which was an advantage at that time, is now considered a warning sign or a red flag indicating ADHD. We call it impulsivity. In part three of this 12-part video, I talked about the DRD4 dopamine gene. One particular allele or variation of the DNA sequence of the gene, where the sequence happens to be repeated seven times, is related to, well, you can call it the risk-taking gene or novelty-seeking or reward-seeking or sensation-seeking. This may be the hunter's gene preserved in evolution because it conferred advantages in survival ability. And it seems to be prevalent in people diagnosed with ADHD. So now we have something definite to work with in terms of substantiating Hartman's claims that people identified as ADHD are descended from the hunters. Now let's look at a quick chronology. Hartman's book, Initiating This Idea, came out in 1993. In 1997, the first scientific paper giving some credence to Hartman's outlook came out in the Journal of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. It referred to ADHD as a disorder of adaptation. In 2001, a paper came out in the prestigious Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences suggested, suggesting that this seven repeat allele in the DRD4 gene originated as a rare mutational event that nevertheless increased to high frequency in human populations through positive selection. So the natural selection hypothesis of the ADHD gene seems to have some support here. In 2020, 
scientists looked at gene sequences in populations living in prehistoric times compared to modern times and the, found that the frequency of variants associated with this hunter gene has steadily decreased since Paleolithic time, which makes sense in terms of humanity's shift from a primarily hunting culture to an agricultural or farmer's culture. Here's a timeline showing the different ages of humanity over the past 800,000 years. You see that most of the timeline, timeline is given over to the Paleolithic era, the age of the hunter and gatherer. Thus, for most of the time that human beings have existed, they were hunters, not farmers. Agriculture is a relatively recent development, extending back perhaps 12,000 years, a fraction of human beings' time on this planet. We evolved as human beings in environments that were natural, often unpredictable, and requiring the skills of the hunter to survive. It bears noting here that we did not spend 800,000 years cultivating genetic sequences through natural selection that help us adapt to environments like this one. We were simply not genetically programmed to spend five to six hours a day in the typical classroom environment. And yet that's what we expect of our children and teens. In part four of this 12 part series on ADHD, I explore the way schools are structured and how they are basically brain hostile to students diagnosed with ADHD, in part because they need schooling that is novel, exciting, and fast paced. Some people might say, well, we don't live in a rainforest or jungle, we live in a modern 21st century culture, and our kids need to adapt to this environment. The reality is that our contemporary culture consists of a variety of environments some of which kids labeled ADHD have trouble adapting to, like this one, and other environments that capitalize on sensation-seeking, risk-taking, or novelty-seeking traits. We should use this information to help design our classrooms for kids, and then steer these students toward careers where to be successful means using these risk-taking, novelty-seeking genes. Careers like firefighting, where there's a lot of movement, action, and thrills and chills, where a person needs to pay attention to many things at the same time, where one needs to respond quickly to input from the environment. Careers like mail delivery that involve novelty and movement. These jobs exploit some of the traits of the hunter transplanted into contemporary life. Careers like emergency room physician or EMTs, again where conditions in the ER are survival-based, just as they are out in the wild for the prehistoric individual. Or jobs like being a roving journalist or TV reporter that involve new assignments all the time, paying attention to lots of cues and stimuli and staying on top of it all. Or careers like forest ranger or nature photographer that literally get one out in the wild and mimic conditions of the prehistoric hunter. Understanding ADHD as an evolutionary adaptation isn't just limited to studying the lives of human beings thousands of years ago. It can give us clues as to how to construct our classrooms and help us determine how people diagnosed with ADHD can successfully adapt in today's complex world. For more information about ADHD as an evolutionary advantage and other themes of this video series, see my book, The Myth of the ADHD Child, 101 Ways to Improve Your Child's Behavior and Attention Span Without Drugs, Labels, or Coercion. It's available through online stores like Amazon, national chains like Barnes & Noble, and independent bookstores worldwide. It's also available as an audio recording on Audible. And make sure to watch my other videos in this series on YouTube. Thanks so much for listening.